Well, if you have a colorful cat or a to-die-for dog, you might think it ought to be in pictures. There's a Petcasso willing to put your pooch in paintings. Our own Rembrandt, Kerry Berglund, has the story. We have dressed them up and taken them out, pampered them, photographed them, even stuffed them, treated them like they were members of the family. Priceless little works of art. Misty watercolor memories of the way we were. Well, now your pet actually can be a work of art, thanks to the work of this artist. And I had a dream about some of my friends being in this famous painting. And so I did a, when I got up the next day, I thought, well, that'd be neat. So I started painting people's portraits into uh, these famous paintings that I was copying for my art classes. And then people started commissioning me to do them. Bo Bradford will put your pooch in a Picasso, your Doberman in a Degas, your Siamese in a Cezanne. You get the idea. The biggest trick and the biggest difference is that you can't get them to pose for very long at all. A dog's attention span generally for most pets is about 10 or 15 minutes. Tracy and Chris Essie are on pet and portrait number three. Bonnie replacing the giant rose in a Magritte. Well, she wanted mm. to fill the room with all her... the time with her presence. So <laughs> yeah, that's we right. Figure it's a very... This would be an appropriate yeah, she's... painting for her to be in. When did she get to be a beauty? When did he grow to be so tall? So that's why we chose that particular pose. She does that a lot. Wasn't it yesterday when they were small? The dog is almost life-size sitting here, and I like the colorfulness of the picture. Because the dog is kind of dark. black. And the L.A. client list is growing. Diane English's horse, a la Warhol. And here's a twist. Hugh Hefner had the nude taken out of Rousseau's The Dream, replaced by kids and pets. People are much easier to please with their pets. People have a certain uh, self-image in their own minds, you know, of how they look. And that's very hard to, you know, meet that criteria. But, but they always love the paintings of their dogs, and they never ask me to change anything. Sunrise, sunset. Sunrise, sunset. In Beverly Hills, Carrie Bergman, Channel 9 News. Tonight, Larry King Live, 9 Eastern, on CNN. Well, this has been a wacky day, hasn't it? A little bit of everything. Now it's canines on canvas. California trendsetters laying out the big bucks to immortalize their pets. And they're not content with just any artist rendition. No, no. CNN's Ann McDermott reports they insist on masterpieces. Of course. Nelson the Rottweiler is going to get his portrait painted, but since Nelson isn't real good at posing, the artist will work from a photo. Nelson's humans want the artist to capture the real Nelson. He's, he's like almost what you consider perfection in the breed, and, and uh -huh. they should be very um, powerful and, and um, robust. Nelson the Noble. <laughs> okay. You want his mouth closed, right? Nelson prefers it open. No, they haven't gone crazy. They're simply making cat noises to keep Nelson in place. It doesn't work. Say. Okay. Say. Eventually, they get the photo. And for Bo Bradford, the real work begins. But this will not be just any pet portrait. Bradford paints menageries and masterpieces. A cat in a Mondrian, dogs in a Dega, even an Andy Warhol hound. People really love their pets, and pets really love their owners. Pets, however, probably wouldn't shell out a couple of thousand for one of these portraits. But those who do say it's worth it. So it's kind of fun to have, uh, you know, that with your own with your own animal. And, and, uh, uh, watch where you put your paws, Nelson. That's Socrates. He has his own painting, a copy of a Rousseau. I thought it would be nice to remember Socrates when he was 35 pounds. Socrates has since gained 100 pounds. But his puppyhood is now immortalized. Also immortalized, Simon the Cat. Yeah, just a handsome dude. Both in person 
and in paint. Okay, you say these things are only copies, but if you wanted the original, say, of this one, it could cost you 50 million. And besides, it wouldn't have your Sparky in it. And that, of course, is the whole point. I'd like to present Nelson. Oh, my God. That's great. That is unbelievable. Ann McDermott, CNN, Los Angeles. It's terrific. <laughs> there we are. Albie Nelson. <laughs> That's Newsday. I'm Lou Waters. I'm Cheryl Atkinson. We'll be back in one hour. Here I was on CNN Worldwide 19 times four years ago. I've shown all around the world. The phone calls started coming in that day. 90% of them were from Beverly Hills. I had three or four calls from, e from England. I had four or five calls from Germany, two calls from Paris, one from Argentina, and the rest were from Beverly Hills. So there is something about California I don't know what it is, I have no idea, I haven't figured it out yet, that attracts uh, people to my work. I, I think it's because there are a lot of art lovers. Everyone thinks his or her pet is just the best, of course, as everyone thinks the same thing of his or her child. And so to see them in classic works of art elevates them to the status of being important and wonderful. Socrates, when he was about 16 pounds, used to love to go out in the backyard and absolutely run and jump and lay on the ferns. And when I was looking for a masterpiece, you know, what, what I wanted to put him in, I saw the Rousseau with all the jungle look and these ferns, and I thought it would be perfect. So we thought we had captured him in his youth, and now we wanted to capture him in his, uh, in his manhood. You know, he's, he's four and a half, five years old, so he's in his prime, I guess about 35 years old. So we wanted to capture that. Oh, man, that's great. He's never had so much attention. All right, let me get him over on the side. Bo makes the most incredible cat noises. There you go, perfect, perfect. They were so real that I thought Socrates was going to eat him at one point. It's a classic Great Dane pose. Yeah. That's what I like about it. Mm -hmm. it. It's like a portrait. He's looking straight at us, just like in a Rousseau painting. I can't decide. OK. Now well. I'm going to leave it up to your artistic license. Okay. <laughs> There's something very expressive about a dog's tongue. In very formal portraits of dogs, when you're trying to show a typical breed, they never show their tongues. In fact, sometimes it's hard to get a dog's tongue out. We have to run them up and down the stairs to get their tongue out to capture them, which is a very normal thing for a dog to do, is to have his tongue out. I'm sure some of my dogs recognize themselves because as soon as I bring them into the room and I show the client the painting for the first time, they will bark and bark and bark and they really do know that it's them in the painting or else they think it's another dog. I'm not, I'm not sure, but they do react to their paintings. It's very funny. This chaise lounge that I'm sitting in now is Socrates' bed. So every once in a while I see him looking up at it. Um, then he looks at himself in the mirror. I think he's aware. It's a very smart dog. <laughs>